דניאל עשור, ספיקינג, ואני אגיד לכם לפני פעם בפרקטיקה רדיו פרוגרם, מהי פרסונל סטורי, ואני אגיד לכם איך אני... I was, um, I was in the church, and I left the church and made a tshuva. Um, and I told you um, the entire story. It was, took me a um, few hours to tell you the story. Um, and I would like to just to end up with the story and um, tell you that Uh, one day when uh, the cri- Christmas time came and uh, I was already convinced not to go to the church and uh, basically um, I realized that um, through arguments through theological arguments with uh, some rabbis in upstate New York that I would I've made a mistake by choosing Christianity over Judaism and by getting baptized to Christianity or by getting married to a gentle woman and uh, losing my own Jewish identity. Then I um, started to uh, really not go to the church and, and besides not only not to go to the church but also I told you how I... got separated from my wife and and uh, but I didn't go back I didn't go back to to really study Judaism I just went back to business and uh, I went on with my life and uh, one day one day after uh, I gave a lecture if I was invited to give a lecture about it to fill in in a church if you're recall uh, the story and um, then uh, Dr. Michael uh, invited me to his house and uh, basically uh, what I what he showed me was the um, 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 a, 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 the temple of Jerusalem a model that he built and In his living room uh, for th- over three years in in a, in, a, in the right measurement uh, uh, equal to uh, to the measurement of the temple of uh, Jerusalem uh, I mean um, in a you said Knemida um, uh, and basically uh, What he showed me was was very impressive, and I asked him, "Where are you doing it? What for aren't you a Christian?" And he told me that he uh, he came to uh, believe to a conclusion after he he made his own research that Judaism was the right way, and he became a, a Noah observant to the seven commands of Noah and uh, And he told me, um, and I told you about the conversation that we had, the interesting conversation that rose uh, uh, some questions and, and, and uh, um, basically made me think, think again about uh, my decisions in life. But one day... Um, When the Christmas time came and i I left uh, my job because it was I promised to uh, Dr. Itzhak Batesh that if I will find Judaism right, uh, then I will not go back to work with missionaries and I can find find another job. Uh, so what I've done is uh, basically I quit my job and I started to. Uh, I made a, a phone call to my friends in New York and asked them to send me some merchandise, some uh, sunglasses, um, fashion, uh, design, and to basically fly them um, over the ocean to the islands to 
Key West, Key Largo, uh, Key Biscayne, to all the keys, and uh, they agree to send the merchandise to me. And uh, basically, after I loaded the airplane, I took um, 210 uh, Cessna, and I flew um, over the ocean. I started at uh, six. Uh, six uh, uh, p.m. It was afternoon. I flew. Um, flew over the ocean. I saw. Uh, even it was even earlier. I don't really. I saw the sunset, and I was flying over the ocean and to the islands, and everything was already uh, uh, made up by you know phone calls. Uh, Appropriate phone calls, and and they were supposed to wait for me and take the merchandise and uh, that they they uh, they ordered, and to go on from one island to another. And basically, when I landed in Key West, it was uh, at a very uh, late hour. It was one o'clock in the morning. I was uh, exhausted from a, a long business day and um, and um, after giving the merchandise to the to the people that ordered them and um, I grabbed something to eat in, in in Key West and and then I went back to the airport I started to eat and uh, in the in the airplane and um, then I tried to take some some rest because I was very very tired and I didn't feel comfortable enough to um, to sit in the airplane and, and to have a, a nub I just uh, decided after hour or hour and a half to um, fly back to Miami, fly back to Boca Raton, and um, I got uh, a permission to do so from the airport. Uh, I taxied to the to uh, uh, to the um, uh, to begin the flight, and I got a, a departure. Uh, and uh, after takeoff. I was climbing to 700 feet, and uh, then I started to fly a straight, straight and level flight to Miami. I was listening to the weather briefing, and um, as I was uh, flying and listening, I realized that something is going on, and, and uh, the weather are getting worse and worse, and... Uh, I was supposed to land in one of the islands, I think it was Key Largo, to refuel the airplane. I knew that I don't have enough uh, fuel and I have to um, refuel in, in Key Largo. As I was flying, then the situation got worse and, and then when I contact the uh, ground control in Key Largo, they told me that they don't have a condition for landing and, and uh, to go on with the flight to Miami. I contact Key West again and, and uh, to see whether I can fly back and they told me the same thing. Uh, the situation was got worse and, and the weather was uh, not in a in in a good condition for landing, and I went on with the flight toward Miami, and one of the engine quit. The left engine quit. I had to um, to fly um, sliding flight. Uh, it's a, basically to correct myself when, you, when I fly with my one engine. And then um, I contact uh, Miami, contact Miami, and, and uh, Miami uh, Airport, 
And uh, basically, when they saw me on the screen and they asked me how how much fuel I have, and then uh, I was I was telling them how much fuel I got, and they gave me a heading to an emergency emergency landing uh, uh, a place uh, because I was very short with fuel. The second engine quit. And I was gliding over the ocean. Uh, I was pretty high. It was 7,000 uh, 7, uh, feet, but it's not enough to to really reach Miami. And um, basically, the situation got even worse and worse, and, and I couldn't even... I was not sure that I was going to be able to make it to the emergency landing. Um, like calculating the wind and 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 the height and the airspeed, and uh, basically, I was I was losing altitude, and the um, the person that was there uh, in in the ground in the ground control in Miami. Uh, ask me, usually they don't have enough time, everything is a very you know, short, uh, short, co- short commands, uh, um, because it's a very, it's I, a class A airspace, it's a very busy sky, and he told me, you've got an accent, where are you from, and I told him that I'm from Israel, and then he started to ask me personal questions, uh, um, does it mean that you're a Jew? And I told him, it doesn't really mean that I'm a Jew, but I am a Jew. Then he told me, so why don't you pray now? Because it's uh, you're in a in a very bad situation. <laughs> you're, you're you're losing altitude. You don't have engine, and and uh, and and basically, uh, it seems like you're not gonna make it to the. Uh, to the um, emergency uh, uh, airport, uh, em- emergency uh, uh, landing uh, place. And um, basically, I didn't know whether I'm supposed to, to um, I, w- I was supposed to jump from the airplane because I, was n- I couldn't make it and I didn't have a condition, weather condition to make it the landing anyways. So, um, while losing altitude, I started to um, think of how, what should I do? I, and I, I opened the door of the airplane at uh, at the where where I, where I was supposed to leave the airplane or jump from the airplane to the ocean, but then I realized that. The FAA, uh, the rescue uh, uh, people, will, will probably come in a few hours and 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 find me right there in the ocean. Um, who knows uh, how they're gonna find me? Because it was dark night. Um, I knew that if I'm gonna jump, then I'm gonna see the sharks. And they're gonna sur- surround me uh, from all over, and who knows in what condition they're gonna find me if they're gonna find me. Uh, so I somehow I I was out of fear. I made it my own decision. I decided not to jump from the airplane. I closed the door. I was completely wet, uh, and and then. And then um, I lost more altitude and more altitude, and I, I, I found out. I, I mean, I was, I knew that I'm supposed to to be drowned in the water, in the ocean, and and I started to um, uh, fear so much that of what's going on in 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 in, in immediate minutes. Uh, I'm, I'm about to lose my life. That's what I felt. I, I knew that I can, that I can lose my consciousness and, and maybe drown in the water or, uh, or get a, a punch from, f- 
from uh, from something and then drown with the airplane. I was supposed to jump, but I couldn't. I didn't have enough courage to do so. And I was losing the altitude and couldn't see outside. It was not a was not a visual flight uh, flight no more because I couldn't see from the window no more um, and then basically I lost attitude and lost attitude and then I started to and then I I, I had this I screamed Shema Israel so uh, loud and and and, and, and in so, so much fear of what's going on or, and, and what what's going to happen in in, in immediate minutes, that uh, basically I started uh, I, I shouted Shema Israel, and it was surprisingly I shouted Shema Israel. It was even a, a big surprise to me because at that time I was in between cultures, between Christianity and Judaism. I was hesitating always. I was j- jumping from one set of mind to another, from one concept to another, and I didn't know uh, how to go on with my life. But when Shema Yisrael came out of my mouth, it was much stronger than me. It came um, from much deeper than I could even imagine. Uh, and that all of a sudden I felt that I'm on a I'm, I'm landing I'm landing on and, and I can feel the wheels of the airplane on on a on a on the field basically on the field and I despite the fact that I could, couldn't see and the, despite the fact that I've been asked to to leave the airplane jump from the airplane uh, and, um, and and basically I didn't give up I couldn't um, make the landing but then I, I felt something uh, hard underneath, underneath the wheel and then I made some breaks and I know that I have made it um, basically after stopping the airplane on the field I couldn't even see anything outside. It was uh, it was very very uh, raining so so bad that I couldn't see anything. Uh, I opened the door, but when I opened the door, I realized that the wing from the side of 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 mine as a pilot from the left side. Uh, the wing was over the ocean and uh, b- b- over the water and and i realized that it's 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 a it's a, a road that above the water and um and, and when i opened the other door uh, the the right door and and i left the i mean i i went off the airplane i was really curious where i am and i basically stepped forward to see where the road end it was two meter ahead of me that the road ended and I was supposed to fell to the water if I would if I would continue on a little more so I I was completely wet and uh, and and I went back to the airplane waiting to the uh, FAA and uh, to to the rescue uh, people to come and uh, they come after over um, over 40 minutes uh, but then I was uh, was waiting there and I had a lot of time to think uh, why did I scream Shema Israel the only light that I got back then was the light of my own airplane and I was sitting there shaking and realizing that uh, a miracle happened here I couldn't actually fly the airplane, land the the airplane it was not me that was landing the airplane because I didn't have uh, 
control over the situation. It was either the Ashgacha making the landing and I'm alive or um, or not. After uh, I went back to uh, to Bakaraton and uh, the FAA took me back to took took me uh, f- flew me to Bakaraton and uh, their research conclusion was that I basically uh, I miraculously I I'm, I'm alive they don't have uh, much of an explanation I was not supposed to land on the field uh, I couldn't even make it um, according to my to my fuel condition and and uh, the height and and the weather and the situation then I started to really think what's going on I if you remember the story from the beginning then you probably remember that in Israel I when I was young and I and I was running in the desert and I got caught by uh, by in the desert in the middle of the desert uh, losing my way um, during the night and 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 losing my the, the strength of my body and 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 uh, and, and uh, basically fainting in the desert and waking up early in the morning don't not knowing where I am on the map and and um, and I realized that I'm very far away from civilization and I didn't know where I am and as a as a child and I started to scream Shmai Israel it was a Shmai Israel in the desert but then at the age of 34 almost when I was in when I used to live in, in, in Fort Lauderdale and have my life uh, uh, there and then I shouted Shema Yisrael but it was over the ocean somewhere else and, and I realized that God is giving me and the, the Ashgacha are giving me um, the chances uh, that all the chances that I was supposed to be given to realize that Somebody is really keeping uh, uh, me alive in in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a life situations, so I will make um, my conclusion about life and and make a decision what life is all about, what's a, to search for the definition of life and to make up my mind how uh, I what do I think about life and how how I'm supposed to live them. I become a little more serious about life and uh, I started to really go to the synagogue to listen to to Jewish prayers and uh, for the first time and to see whether God <laughs> is uh, present in, in the synagogue I didn't, I, in the beginning, I didn't feel much. I just was sitting there in the synagogue and staring at the people praying, and and I couldn't even follow the siddur and the text. It was too long to me and too uh, complicated in the beginning. Uh, but then, but then afterward, you know, I realized that I remember what Doctor Batesh have told me during the argument in, in upstate New York and he told me that if I gonna try to outreach Jewish people to convert them to Christianity so maybe when I will make a tshuva God will not allow me to make a tshuva and he will close the door at me so uh, I was afraid that God maybe shut the door and, and, and he probably because I was a missionary will not allow me to make a tshuva or maybe allow me but not I'm not going to be able to make it I didn't understand you know in what way and in, in which way it's going to take place maybe the Ashgacha will not leave me but on the other hand I was confused because I saw the Ashkacha and I didn't know it was a, an inside contradiction 
or how to and so I decide to to drive my car along Miami uh, South Miami uh, uh, beach and to search for homelesses and to take care of them to have some to do some good deeds some good action to show some grace toward people people and and maybe God will have mercy on me and he will realize that I'm a good uh, good person good man or I knew that he know my heart I knew that he probably but maybe he wants some proofs or maybe I need to help my luck or to my destiny my destiny and I really started to walk around or drive around and search for homelessness and to bring bring them home and And to have them take a shower at my house and and um, if they um, couldn't um, collect enough uh, charity of a dollar to go to a shelter, then I used to add them some more money and then to take them to the shelter or to take them to a pizza. I re- remember once that I flew all night uh, over um, over the ocean doing some maneuvers and you know, couldn't really sleep and and trying to to s- say to heal him in Hebrew because I was so so confused but I realized that Christian Christian people are really doing I really uh, saying it to heal him. Um, the book of Psalms uh, the book of King, the King David and I and, and, and the Jewish people are re- reading the prayers of the Tehillim so I decided since I'm a, an Israeli and since I, my language is Hebrew then why shouldn't I read uh, the book of uh, Psalms the book of King David in Hebrew uh, while I'm flying so I call to that flight and Over the night, Yoshev Besater Elyon. And uh, I was listening to, uh, to, to some music while I was doing some maneuvers. And, and, and basically, I, I took some, some tea with me. And I was trying to, to, to pray uh, to heal him. Um, and then when I landed, I... didn't go back home I was I took my car and I drove to North Miami and South Miami uh, Miami Beach and I was searching for homelesses uh, that couldn't uh, get by and try to give them some food and to have some to do some good uh, deeds and, and and maybe to help some other people so God will will see me heaven will see me. I really remember once it was eleven thirty at night, and I was searching from home for homelessness in in South Miami Beach and uh once I saw a very old man carrying all what he got in life on his shoulder it was not much and then i uh I realized according to his clothing that he's uh really uh, poor men and um, I was searching in my pocket and I found 20 bucks bill and I gave him and it was um, he was uh, surprised to get uh, a 20 dollar bill from me and um, but then then I walked walk I was supposed to walk to the other side and then I I thought to myself, why, why don't you invite him to a restaurant or something, or to, to, uh, to uh, uh, a pizza, or to eat something? And I walked back, and I, and I uh, basically uh, I put my hand on his shoulder, and I told him, can I invite you to a pizza or to eat something? And then he turned to me with a very... severe face and he asked me are you a Jew and I told him yes and he started to scream and shout and, and, and he told me 
and he told and he took the twenty dollar bill and he threw it to the to the floor and all the people uh, that was walking there in the street stood and, 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 and came over to see what's going on here and I was standing and he shouted at me uh, that um, go back to your camels go back to Israel what are you doing here in, in our land and 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 um, uh, Hitler was supposed to kill you all and, and I was you know really surprised and was very anti Semitic person, and he started to scream and curse, and so I stood there and I didn't respond, I didn't even respond. And um, then he threw the twenty dollar bill on the ground, and all the people was like, I don't know, maybe fifteen people staring at us, and and saying that I'm just standing there. And he walked away, and I took the twenty dollar bill, and there was a, a um, um, bus station with a garbage can, and I took it and I told him, "You don't want the money? I'm a very rich man, uh, and I don't really need the twenty dollar bill. But if you don't have a decency and respect to take it uh, with a human." Uh, with a, with a prey, then you take it with an insult, and and I put it in the garbage. And I do, told him, you know, I don't need the money, and I put I put the twenty dollar bill in the garbage. And uh, then I was walking like maybe another hundred feet, and then he ran to the garbage can and he started to take all the garbage outside and then to search for the $20 bill and all the people started to laugh and I walked away. It was uh, another red light that turned on. What's going on? I was doing something good. I was really trying to do it not for people but for heaven to see that really I am I'm doing something for, but also for because I I, I had had a mercy on that person, and I realized that no matter what, anti-Semitism have no border. No, they just hate you as a Jew. No matter what you're gonna do, it's just a, a, a mysterious thing. It's something that I have no explanation to it I went back home I started to uh, to uh, find my way to Judaism I realized that I cannot run from on, on my own identity uh, there was a, a, a bookstore that, that used to sell um, um, holy books um, Judaism books and when I enter to the book, the, the the person that used to sell the books uh, was uh, a satmo, uh, a Hasidic, and uh, I somehow chose uh, Mesilat Yesharim because Mesilat Yesharim it's a very thin book, and 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 uh, and the the letters are very big, and and there is uh, points there, and I, I figured. Uh, it's it's something that I can really maybe uh, easily and, and comfortably read it um, and then I can just tell you <laughs> the Ashgacha how far the Ashgacha went on with me I'm married now I'm, I'm at the age of 48 I'm living here in Tel Zion in nearby Jerusalem in uh, Yudav Shamwan. Benj Benjamin, uh, but uh, I can I can tell you that I got married with a wife that left the kibbutz, and she she got uh, an education of a shomer atzair, and uh, basically the first book that she got from anybody about Judaism was Mesilat Yesharim. Same book that I purchased, 
in at, at the bookstore in 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 Miami and um that uh, Satmel Hasidic I invited him to fly with me and he flew with me over you know, over the ocean and over over the city of Miami and he was very impressed by me I was, back then I had a uh, long hair and uh, And uh, I was not exactly fitting the view of a Satmel Hasidic uh, family, but he invited me to well, pass over a seder in, at his house. And he had ten children, and it was so beautiful. And I, I was listening to the songs, and, and I, I was, you know, it was fascinating. And I saw all the silver... Uh, <clears throat> uh, dishes and 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 all the the atmosphere and uh, and the songs and it was so beautiful and um, basically when i when i when I stare at it from my point of view now i I can tell you that at the same passover that I started to to go and to to inv- invite myself uh, or, or to be invited to to uh, to a, a Jewish family and my wife here in Israel I didn't meet her yet I will meet her in a shidduch two years after but uh, she started her tshuva at the same Passover that I started and Uh, to uh, really curious about Judaism and I went to that uh, Satmer uh, family and basically she she was on the bus uh, with her viola uh, to play in, in, uh, in the ph- uh, Philharmonic in Jerusalem and um, she she went on with her viola in in Haifa and nearby her in the bus, Uh, uh, it was uh, a Hasidic uh, young woman her name was Brachi she was uh, a Slonim Hasidic and she sat by her and they, they had a conversation and and uh, that uh, Hasidic uh, young uh, woman told her y- y- you know you sound very wise woman but uh, but you don't uh, keep uh, Torah and mitzvot uh, and um You know I, I invite you but come a little more moderate and and I inv- invite you to come to my house my father is a very op- a very uh, nice person he will accept you as a guest in in, in Passover Center and then uh, Vered, my wife uh, that will be my wife afterward in a two years in a shadow uh, then uh, then she she invited herself to She, she agreed to come to Masharim or to Shmuel Navi in, in Jerusalem to a, a Hasidic family to see the Jewish folklore and and to really observe uh, the uh, atmosphere and, uh, and to enjoy herself on the environment of a, a Hasidic a Slonim family um, at that same Passover that I started to wake up. Maybe it's a, a minor things, but for me it's not a minor thing. I, I, I see the Ashgacha and I really can, can tell you that after leaving the States, uh, just like I left Egypt, <laughs> I sold my airplane as fast as I can. I sold you know, all the things. I, I, I met a, a very nice rabbi that, that guided me. His name was uh, Rabbi Avraham Bitton, and uh, he took me as a Chavruta, and he started to study with me. He told me, now you have to pack your, your stuff and to sell everything and go back to Israel. You have a mission in life to do, and uh, your mission is not here. Your mission is in over, overseas. It's, it's, it's back in Israel, and, and you, got to, you got to fly back. So... What I, I was just like a, like a child listening to, to that rabbi that I really held from him as a, as a, as a, a spiritual man and 
very great rabbi, and and um, I did exactly what he told me to do. And I sold my airplane, and surprisingly, I didn't lose money. I, I got the same amount after using the the airplane for over a few years. I got the same money that I that I that I bought it for, and.